Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the second Google Apps for Education Extra Credit webinar. My name is Jason Cook. I'm a member of the Google Apps team. I'm based here in Seattle, and I'm joined on the line today by two of my Google colleagues, Elliot Greenwald and Stephen Bucci, who are both based in Mountain View. Our featured speakers today from Northwestern University are James Altman, Manager of Faculty Support Services, and Brian Nielsen, Project Manager for Faculty Initiatives. Uh, the apps team here at Google is you know, very excited about the open source work that Northwestern has done to connect apps and Blackboard, and we're very happy to have James and Brian here to talk more about this project. Uh, a couple quick notes regarding logistics. Uh, we are going to do Q&A at the end of the presentation, so if you have any questions as we go along, um, just send them to me uh, via the chat window, and I'll queue them up uh, for the end of the presentation. I'm also going to push out uh, the telephone dial-in information, so if you run into any issues with the WebEx audio stream, that's an alternative way to um, hear the conference. So uh, without any further ado, uh, I'm going to pass the mic uh, to Brian. Thank you, Jason. This is, I'm Brian Nielsen. I work here at Northwestern in Academic and Research Technologies on Managing Faculty Initiatives. Glad to be here. Um, and today, James and I are going to be talking about our integration of Google Apps and Blackboard, um, an open source project that we call Baboogle. Uh, some people just refer to it as Boogle, but we're calling it Baboogle. Um, so I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do today uh, is really go through three things. Um, initially, what I'd like to do is just introduce you to Northwestern's situation with both Blackboard and Google Apps, give you a little bit of our history, um, and then also talk about why we've taken on this project, why we think it's important. Um, and following that, James is going to be talking about the actual functionality of Baboogle um, in a few slides, and then I will come back and present some examples of the work that's been done on our campus here at Northwestern regarding uh, using the Baboogle and Google Apps tools. So that's, that's where we're going to go, and I'm going to just get started right now. Well, Northwestern has been a long-time customer of Blackboard. We actually began use of Blackboard in 1999 or late 1998, um, and it's it's popular on campus. There are over 2,100 active courses this, at, at this this quarter, um, and we've had a steady growth over the decade um, in use of Blackboard, and we've also done uh, integrations with some other tools, um, what, we, what we've always been aware of, and I think many Blackboard customers, and especially in the early years, have been aware of, is that Blackboard was built initially um, by some students at Cornell University to allow an instructor to push out the course syllabus to students, push out handouts, push out readings, and so on to students. Um, and that was the, really the birth of Blackboard back when it was called Course Info. It was built initially, initially to solve the instructor's problems. Um, over time, it's changing, but we're still very much aware of it solving this instructor problem. And we've come to, uh, to uh, characterize that problem uh, sometimes as the stage on the stage problem, or in this case, the Nuremberg funnel problem. Uh, it happens that in Nuremberg, Germany, there's a uh, sort of colloquial expression referring to the Nuremberg funnel as something that a professor or instructor, uh, the way that he or she teaches by pouring information into the student. Uh, this is a classic model of instruction. It's something that I'm sure many or most all of us are familiar with for years and years. Um, but that doesn't get at the, the contemporary way that we want to think about instruction. We, we're really interested in using the technology supporting a new model in which um, it's not the instructor doing all the activity and the students sitting back and listening to a lecture, but it's the students actively engaged in learning at, by doing. Um, 
sociologists and psychologists refer this to, to this as collaborative construction of your knowledge. And um, it's something that happens, of course, among research scientists at our universities. We want to be able to pass that sort of methodology uh, on to every student in the university, not just, say, those advanced graduate students who may be working on uh, developing their skills as researchers. We're aware of, of the need for students in all walks of life uh, when they get out of a university or other institution to be able to do more on their own, to be able to work in teams, to be able to um, find new information on their own and build information stores of, uh, that can be useful in their work life. So that's really the, uh, the core purpose of our integration of Google Apps and Blackboard. It's not just the integration of one web application and another application, web application. A web application can always be tied to another web application just with a single link. That's a straightforward issue and not really much of a problem. Uh, we're dealing with something a little deeper, and we want to uh, encourage this kind of collaborative construction of new knowledge through our course management system. Thanks, Brian. Hi, this is James Altman, um, Manager of Faculty Support Services here at Northwestern. Um, and as Brian laid the groundwork for what's um, what's been the standard course management system at Northwestern for 11 years now um, as Blackboard, and how we are seeing, um, in some cases, limitations in the way that, that that system initially intended for more of a delivery mechanism to be uh, a collaborative environment. While Blackboard is making um, changes, um, it wasn't something that was built in from the beginning. Uh, some of the changes in Blackboard now are things like student groups that have wikis and blogs and more collaborative tools for the students as that platform develops. But at Northwestern, we've had a different collabor collaboration platform for students since uh, 2007, and that's been the Google Apps for Education platform. Here it's branded as at u.northwestern.edu. Um, sometimes I get to bring the perspective of the student uh, to my job and to my role in academic technologies here. I'm a graduate student at Northwestern, and I've been using these accounts since uh, this Google Apps tool since 2008. Um, what was amazing to me as a student from that perspective was these were the standard tools by that time. They had been rolled out for a year, and immediately student, um, and my classmates and I, when we gathered in groups, went to these tools immediately. We were using a Google Doc to organize notes. Uh, we were using spreadsheet to um, organize tasks for the project. We were using forms to uh, find out who would be available when in the calendar to be able to arrange appointments with each other and meetings with each other. Uh, and that was happening somewhat behind the scenes. It was very uh, productive um, and it was very production oriented. But the, the instructors weren't getting, A, they weren't getting a real grasp on what we were doing in those groups, on those tools, because they didn't have access. And they weren't also able to seed or structure those kinds of meetings in the um, learning styles that they would like to or through pedagogical examples that they would like to. So even though the collaboration was happening for students, it was very um, production-oriented and, and productivity-centered around those tools. So enter Baboogle. Um, uh, with the new uh, platform and new ability for instructors to be able to to use something that has been around at Northwestern for 11 years, Blackboard, and essentially plug in these very collaborative and very useful and very easy to use tools, they can now start to direct some of the work that those students are doing as opposed to just having them have productive meetings and find out when they can meet with each other, they can say, not only do you need to do that through those tools, but we're going to also set up something that's more in-depth, more pedagogically focused, and is actually going to produce content for this class as opposed to just produce meeting times for this class. Um, through the combination of the systems, we can leverage uh, Blackboard's very solid ability to have um, the secure course site, um, Blackboard's amazing ability for uh, grading, uh, assignment uh, dissemination, 
and to communicate with the students while leveraging the very open, very co collaborative, and often uh, um, so collaborative that it it spans beyond a single course site. So Google Apps sites can obviously be shared with those um, not enrolled in the class through the university registrar, but also through content area experts or s subject matter experts in the field that can help collaborate with these um, Google sites through this new tool. So let's get to the nitty gritty of what the Google does. Um, there's two main areas, uh, and and the first is which is providing access directly to these tools from Blackboard. What you're seeing is a Blackboard tool panel. This is presented on the very first page when anyone logs in to Blackboard at Northwestern, and you can see the links for Google's apps, docs, calendar, and sites listed right um, in the tools panel on the first page when they log in. This doesn't require them to log in again. It passes the appropriate account information to our Google Apps domain and lands them in the appropriate area that they've selected, either Docs, Calendar, or Sites. So that um, allows for very quick access for students and faculty. Um, and often we find that this is the way that they're accessing it as opposed to going directly to Google Apps because Blackboard is a known uh, quantity in, in uh, academics and at Northwestern. The other area is the more integrated area. This is showing a view of the documents folder in a course site. And the instructor has an option under the standard add interactive tool menu provided by Blackboard to access certain interactive tools. Here we're listing the Google Apps document, calendar, and site. Should an instructor click on either one of those, they'll be, list, they'll be presented with a list of their documents, calendar, or site. And when they select uh, any one of those, content items, it's automatically shared with the roster of the class. At that point, a link appears in the, appears in the class, and any student or anybody that's enrolled in the class, uh, even if it was uh, a guest, would be able to access the document. I'm going to pass it back to Brian for some examples of projects that have already been completed here at Northwestern. Thanks, James. I thought that was a good explanation of, of what additional functionality and value the uh, the Google uh, innovation provides for us, and we hope for other institutions as well. Um, what I'm going to do now is go through a few examples to show the kinds of things that have been done in where the instructor more purposefully designs an assignment which takes advantage of Google Apps functionality, uh, something that we uh, are really very interested in, again, because We've had students act, having access to Google Apps, but not faculty heretofore. The first example I'm going to be showing in some depth is the collaborative development of a wiki. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit how um, this was done last year. Uh, following that, um, exam other kinds of examples, sharing assembly of data, sharing uh, students, uh, sharing data in essentially real time. Um, another example of the kind of thing that can be done is the coordination of a class and individual calendars or immediate sharing of students' writing, um, something that has often been um, requested in as a Blackboard function but provided only through the discussion board, which was kind of, uh, in some respects, unruly um, and, and um, not very easily navigable in all cases. So those are the kinds of things that those are the kinds of things that uh, I want to give you a, an idea of. And we'll start with this example of the use of Google Apps, or specifically Google Sites, in the creation of a wiki for a Latin American history class. A year ago, a um, faculty member in the history department, a young faculty member, in fact. Uh, came to us and said, we want to, I would like to, um, create something for this class that's very collaborative, um, maybe an encyclopedia that my students can work on, uh, using new technology. This instructor had had no experience in web publishing. He did not know at the time that he came to us that we were developing this application called Baboogle. And, um, I suggested it to him, and 
just after one conversation, we decided, well, this sounds like it might work. And um, so we made a link from his Blackboard course to a Google site, and here's the Google site that we that was created. The initial uh, page was just something that I put together just to get them started, and from that point forward, it was really the work of the students in the class to uh, – make this actually a very interesting and rich resource. The class had 27 students in it, and each week, two of the students were responsible for editing the, quote, encyclopedia, unquote. And as editors, their first task was to decide what articles should be in a Latin American history encyclopedia. That's actually not a trivial problem at all. Um, means that they're having to review a lot of content that's in the syllabus of the course, help make decisions on what's important, what's not important, and um, direct the other 25 students in the class to write uh, individual articles on topics that the editors choose. So the other 25 are, are writers and two are editors. And the following week, two new people are chosen as, edit as editors and the rest become writers, and so on, so that over the span of 10 weeks, uh, this class was able to produce this um, wiki site as a Latin American history encyclopedia. Um, it has over 300 entries in it. Uh, they were very creative. They worked out among themselves uh, how the encyclopedia would be accessed and organized. If you notice on the left, there's, there are entries for people um, events and concepts, and that was the one requirement that the that, that was the one parameter that the instructor placed on setting up the, the assignment. But beyond that, he pretty much stood back and watched them do the development. Students were able to develop uh, biographical entries such as this on Oscar Romero um, with rich media. Um, this is another example of, a, of an historical photograph uh, from this view, Arizona, when uh, uh, vigilantes, American vigilantes, basically pushed out over 1,200 uh, Mexican workers working in the mine, mining industry in Bisbee uh, and uh, made them cross the border back into Mexico. The um, encyclopedia also offers the opportunity to for students to get um, to, to begin to develop interactive resources. This is actually a static map, but we found other examples last year where students could put in um, video, um, sound, and, and other kinds of content into uh, a Google site. So this was, uh, for, for, from our point of view, a very successful experiment, and uh, uh, we're proud of it. Uh, although, it was, as I said, done by 27 students. Another kind of example we had was a faculty member in our Spanish department who runs the Spanish Writing Center, and she wanted to have a way to allow students in, in the Spanish literature program to make appointments with their advisor uh, very easily. What we did, um, working with her, was just to make a link in her Blackboard site for the Writing Center, which is pictured in the upper left, uh, made a link to a calendar in Google Apps that was read-writable by all the students in the class so that a student could just go in, click on the link uh, in the Blackboard site, and immediately reach the Google Calendar that you see on the lower right and put their name in as and, know, and see what times, other available times there might be for an appointment. Uh, this was so successful, the instructor was able to just um, have those um, those uh, appointments automatically delivered uh, to her through her BlackBerry so that she was available all, at all times of um, what students were signing up for things. Still another example, an instructor could very easily, uh, once they became familiar with Google Apps, could create a form linked from their course, 
and submit, provide the form only for the students in their class to do things like this, uh, allow them to communicate to the instructor their uh, paper topic proposals, uh, and it made it for a very neat and straightforward means of uh, gathering uh, these uh, proposals from actually a very large number of students in this class. Well, from these are examples of what we've done so far. We want to uh, really let everybody know that it's not just a Northwestern project. As Jason said at the beginning, it's an open source project. We have an open source site at, on the Ocelot site, which is where many Blackboard building blocks and um, other tools for Blackboard are um, shared and developed. Uh, so you see there the URL, projectsocelot.org slash gf slash project slash baboogle. We invite you to join us. Um, we'll have on the site, um, what you'll see on the site now is, is the software, the building block software, as well as um, documentation on how, how the building block works, what you have to do to, to install it. And soon we'll have a link to a uh, video that is available on YouTube for uh, that describes this Latin American History Encyclopedia project, as well as um, other materials giving more background on our use of Google Apps within Blackboard. So we hope you'll join us. They're currently, actually, we have a, a mailing list, and we'll have a link to that mailing list up on this site as well. There's already 94 individuals uh, from around the country and around the world uh, who are members of this uh, community of Babugle users or Babugle trials. Uh, we, we're find, we found um, people from MIT, from Temple University. Uh, we've had a fellow from the University of the City, University of Hong Kong, University of Alaska. We have people from the military. We have people from K-12 schools, in fact who are interested in learning about Babugal. So um, we, we hope that you'll um, take a look at the site and um, join us. We'll also, we also will have a demo site available that you can request a, an account on and see for yourself how the whole project works. That's pretty much it, and we're um, now really ready for questions and answers, we hope. Um, and um, welcome what... Um, comments you might have about uh, our project. Great. Thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you, James. Um, so I was watching the chat window as, as you were speaking. A couple questions that just came in uh, early on. When you were displaying the apps, uh, now does, does this work within an iframe or is it a separate window? Uh, it actually it? opens a separate window. Um, so uh, the 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 Blackboard window remains open, and, and, a, and a separate window opens, or a separate tab opens, for the for the Google applications. Okay, and with regard to the the calendar application that you showed, does that does that allow instructors themselves to to do calendars for each class, or how exactly uh, does that work? Uh, yes, as soon as an instructor makes any kind of link from uh, into a a Google Apps document or site within his or her Blackboard course, a calendar is actually automatically immediately created. Uh, we use the standard form of the course ID of the uh, Blackboard course becomes the group name, in a sense, for the calendar or the Google Doc or site, uh, which allows the sharing of those um, Google objects. I see. Um, and someone else had asked uh, with regards to just are they understand correctly that, that Google, the Google apps are, are launched from within Blackboard and that you don't need to go externally at all. You can be within within Blackboard and from there a student. Um, That's absolutely correct, yes. Um, a student logs into Blackboard, clicks uh, a link, and is uh, immediately brought into Google apps. Any uh, any thoughts on, on how you've used uh, trained folks to use this, both students and faculty? Sure. Um, well, as, as we've often said about uh, student training, we have 
uh, we have very limited resources here in academic and research technologies, and, we, and students, uh, we are hoping, pretty much learn themselves. But I'll tell you a little story about it in the case of the Latin American History Encyclopedia. As I said for that instructor, um, I had a conversation with him, showed him uh, the possibility, and, and he just went ahead and let his students do it. I visited the class um, in the second week of the term um, and spent about 20 minutes with the students, uh, asked them how many of them had used Google Sites, and um, actually only two or three of the 27 students in the class had used Google Sites before, um, so it was new to them, but they picked it up on their own. Now, for faculty, we have workshops. We had a pilot project last year in which we did um, fairly frequent workshops to explain the functionality of the Google. But you have to understand here at Northwestern, the challenge is really uh, not the Google. The challenge is really, for faculty at least, Google Apps, uh, for which we're quite pleased. A student really uh, – never needs to know uh, that we have what's called a Baboogle application. It's only the instructors that interact with Baboogle directly when they make links in their course sites to Google content that they've initially created. And because we have our faculty on um, systems other than Google Apps or Google Mail, Gmail, uh, the Google Apps are new to many of them. And so we're finding that it's Google Apps that they need training on or I see see. training on. And then one thing, one point of clarification, in terms of uh, single sign-on and authentication, what is the, what is the user experience there when, when they're in Blackboard and they want to jump over to Google? Um, there's actually two possible ways for the student, or and, uh, three, three ways that a student could jump from Blackboard into Google Apps. Um, the first way is from the tools box on the My Courses page, all he or she does is click Google Sites, Google Docs, or Google Calendar, one click, and another window opens to that application in Google. Um, and it opens to, the, to that student's space. In other words, the student's own Google Docs or the student's own Google Sites will, be, will appear there immediately. The same, another option that the student has is to go into the tools menu of any Blackboard course and find there are three, three tool buttons, one for sites, one for docs, one for calendar. And if they click on any of those, they also get into their own Google space, I would call it. Um, again, not related specifically to the course, but just related to their own uses of Google Apps. And then the third way is the way that really involves the Google directly. Uh, once an instructor makes a link in the course to, say, the Latin, Latin American History Encyclopedia or the Common Calendar, the student merely clicks on it as he or she would do any other Blackboard content item uh, and be brought to that specific item in the Google Apps world. Great. Um, so this is a, one other question I've, I've heard in, in different forms from a couple folks, um, and it's sort of a two-parter. Basically, first of all, what, what versions of Blackboard does Baboogle run on? And then secondly, some folks have pointed out, you know, the, the newer versions of Blackboard uh, 9.1 uh, themselves include some uh, wiki-like and site-type yes. functionality. Do you, do you think there's any uh, specific advantages to the combination of Blackboard and, and Google together with with um, for Google in, in, the, in that case? Sure. Let me, let me uh, take the first question first. We actually developed uh, Baboogle initially in Blackboard 8. Uh, before those tools for uh, Wiki and Blog were available um, within Blackboard itself, um, however, you know, when we, we are now uh, running 9.1, so we did a little bit of upgrading to ensure that it's uh, 9.1 compliant works fine. Uh, there's, so we're currently maintaining bo both a version 8 um, building block and a version 9 
9.1 building block. Um, and then uh, your, your second question was, um, your second question was, um, it was, was about the, 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 oh, the, the availability the, uh, of the Blackboard uh, tool. Correct. And, and yeah. how you see Babugal's, uh, comb you know, combination right. of Blackboard exactly. and Google comparing to that. Um, what, what we're, what we've found and what we're finding, um, is explained, I think James, James's comments earlier about putting Google Apps in the hands of instructors has been especially valuable. Um, yes, we do have faculty that are um, creating a simple wiki and simple blogs in the Blackboard space, um, but um, those are often fairly incidental um, learning options for them, uh, and certainly in terms of uh, the wiki, uh, Blackboard's wiki is, is very much um, underpowered compared with Google Sites. Um, so we find that um, by exposing faculty to this collaborative environment that our students have always been or have long been familiar with, we get the faculty more engaged in thinking about their students collectively, and there's more um, communication from faculty member to faculty member about the possibilities for uh, the design of, of new assignments and so on uh, within the Google environment. I see. Uh, one other question that came in earlier on, someone was asking, you know, is it is it possible to use the Google? It basically sounded like they were at an institution that did not or was not currently running Google Apps. Uh, would it be possible for students to, to use some of the Google uh, functionality, uh, I guess, w w with what uh, you No, it requires – it, it does require um, a Google Apps infrastructure within an institution. I so um, it's, it's not like you could make a, an immediate connection to a public uh, Google um, account. Um, because the the instance needs to know who the who the users are. Um, I just in a, to made me think of another comment. We don't um, currently offer Gmail to faculty, um, so that's why you didn't see a, a, still another link to Gmail within the Blackboard interface. Um, if we we happen to have made a different decision in terms of faculty um, email system, so that's that's why. But other institutions could easily uh, have links to Gmail as well uh, in their Blackboard um, instances. Great. And, and regarding installation, is if you could perhaps give a short overview of uh, how that happens, is it a matter of uh, just you know installing a building block, or what else needs to happen sort of on sure. the technical side? Sure. That's a school? good question. Um, it's detailed on our uh, Ocelot project site. There are actually three pieces. One is the building block, which those of you who've worked with building blocks before know that it's very straightforward. There are uh, about four things to configure when you, once you've uh, install the building block, and installing it's really just a matter of uploading it to the server. Um, there's also a um, a little bit of work that needs to be done on the Google Apps side dealing with authentication. It, this supports SSO uh, authentication as well. Um, and the third thing is uh, the installation of a web service, a very small database actually, that contains the linkage between a Google Apps um, identity and a Blackboard identity. That is, the, uh, associates the, the two different identities for each person associated with the university. That does it, uh, typically get put on a separate server, but it's a very, very small and um, small footprint application. And it's explained and described in our project site. 
Great. And and one person commented, uh, actually jumping back a question, you had mentioned that uh, your setup at Northwestern is that students are using Google Apps for email, but, but faculty currently aren't. Um, so if faculty don't have uh, Gmail, how are their accounts set up so that they can use uh, the Google sites and interact uh, directly with the students on them? Yeah, good question. Uh, what happens when a um, when a faculty member uh, begins to use the this Baboogle Bo uh, tool within Blackboard is that um, a essentially a Gmail address that's automatically created for that faculty member, and the email that is initially directed to the to the Gmail account is is forwarded to their regular Northwestern account. So. Um, I actually could be addressed uh, by email in two different ways, bnielsen at northwestern and bnielsen at u.northwestern.edu, uh, the second one being our Google um, Apps domain. So those are created automatically um, at, at the beginning uh, when we set the whole thing up. Great. Um, and uh, one other a couple questions sort of on the, on the topic of – how long does this stuff uh, stick around? For instance, um, you know, how do you deal with the need to retain uh, some of these learning artifacts for accreditation? What happens if a student wants to yep. go back and look at this material uh, two semesters later and so on? Well, there's some good news and bad news there. Um, one, uh, the, the Google Apps data just is, remains. Uh, as well, and as well, students' access to those Google Apps remain. So, uh, in fact, although we could make a course site unavailable at the end of a quarter, let's say, the Google material associated with that course will still be in the Google Apps domain, and students would still be able to reach it. We don't. We have not yet um, designed to resolve the problem of. Uh, course copy and and um, the cycle of quarters in the university in terms of uh, meet, matching up the Blackboard cycle with the Google App cycle. We don't have that yet. And that's why we have an ongoing open source um, activity going on. We have other things that we're also in planning. Some of our uh, graduate students, especially uh, in one program, are very, have been very excited that they will have essentially perpetual access to the Google app, to the Google sites that were associated with their graduate level courses. And they can use it for their ongoing continuing education after they leave Northwestern because they don't lose their um, Google apps identities. Great. Um, one more question that I is perhaps one that uh, Stephen Bucci from the uh, Google team in Mountain View uh, might want to answer. I've seen a, a couple folks uh, ask about the differences between uh, the consumer versions of Google products and, and Google oh. Apps and, mm -hmm. and, and how things are, um, you know, shared and can be secured at the domain level and so on. So, Stephen, do you think you could just give a quick explanation of how, how Google Apps, um, what it can offer schools and, and how it differs from the, the consumer version of the accounts? Certainly, I think there are a few key features. One is that um, Google Apps you provide support. So there's no um, end, you know, support for consumer Gmail accounts, so to speak, as online materials, whereas we do have for administrators of Google Apps 24-7 uh, support. Additionally, it's bound by our EDU terms of service, so um, it references FERPA. Um, you know, the data content is obviously owned by the school and by, or by the end users. The school makes that decision. But there's some different legal ramifications for having an EDU account versus a consumer account, um, and then also for contact sharing, et cetera. So obviously for Gmail accounts, those you have to manage your own contacts, whereas within a school, um, you could sync it up with your directory, so it's very easy to share documents, et cetera. Um, it's all administered by that domain administrator. Uh, that, that's, that is an interesting, it's become an interesting problem or question for us as well. Um, we have, uh, among the graduate students that I was speaking about a few minutes ago, they're interested in some of the other apps, um, and as soon as our uh, domain administrator uh, can open up particular 
additional apps such as Picasa or Blogger or whatever, um, they'd be available as well. Great. Um, one thing I wanted to jump in and say, a couple of folks have pinged and asked, um, you know, can we get these links or will a recording to this, of this webinar be available? Um, and the short answer is yes. I will be sending a follow-up email to uh, all folks who participated today uh, linking to an online version of this webinar that we hope to post uh, by early next week. Uh, and I'll work with uh, Brian and James to also make sure some, some key links are, are sent along in that. Right. Um, I think perhaps just one final question, um, you, you know, what what kinds of help do you find instructors need the most when they when they first start working with Baboogle and, uh, and perhaps Google Apps as well? Um, uh, with Baboogle, they need no help. It, it's just so straightforward. Uh, when they make a link in the course, uh, they get a, a list of all their own documents, sites, or calendars, and they just have to pick which one goes in the course. It's very straightforward. It is Google Apps that uh, can be a challenge for them. And what we have found is that we really uh, want to help our faculty in discovering and devising models for different kinds of act learning activities that, that Google Apps can support. The, the Latin American Encyclopedia is an example. Um, we, we provided just enough training or orientation for the students and the faculty member uh, to allow them to envision the possibility of such an encyclopedia. And that's also uh, an encyclopedia in and of itself is a pretty um, well-structured and um, understood document type. That is, it has articles uh, that have headings and the headings uh, direct you to particular articles based on the alphabet. Um, in other cases, we've done things like this. We've created, we've used Google Sites to create different kinds of blogs. There's a, there's a, just as within the Blackboard blog, uh, with the Google Apps uh, site, one could make a blog in which each student in the class had his or her own space or uh, a blog in which all the students um, contributed into the main space or into a space by topic rather than by their by their names. So we have provided those, we're starting to provide those kinds of models uh, and, and that's the kind of instruction that we feel has been, uh, will be most effective for us. Great. Um, a couple more questions just, sure. just came in. One person asked if you could talk a bit more about support in terms of if a school already has uh, Blackboard and they have Google Apps, they're using them separately. How many, you know, how many people, how much time do you think should be dedicated uh, to uh, a rollout? Um, understand here at Northwestern that our Google Apps uh, infrastructure is handled outside of our particular group, the group that James and I are in. Uh, it's the, it's, it, the group that manages Google Apps is uh, supports lots of general communi uh, communication utilities for all students and faculty within the university. They, have a, they, they manage a general help desk. They help people with network connections, uh, and they help people with, with Google Apps. Uh, so here in academic and research technologies, um, it's, been, it's, it's been myself and my colleagues who've been supporting the uh, development of Baboogle. Um, I would, I would very roughly estimate, um, a, maybe a third, one third FTE or one fourth FTE in the first year, uh, to, to develop the kind of faculty support and documentation that, that, uh, we've developed here. It, I hope, we hope it'll be easier for other institutions because, uh, as I said, we've developed documentation and um, training uh, options so that other other students, we're glad to have other institutions use those. Great. Um, just a couple more. Someone speaking of sort of the technical limitations of uh, Baboogle, Someone asked about compatibility with Angel, and another person had asked about. Um, 
and excuse me while I scroll. Moodle. Uh, just in t- uh, Moodle. Yep. And then also, uh, you know, limitations to uh, when students need to embed different types of learning objects into the Google. So be it a flash video, Illustrator, HTML, and so on. Right. Um, we haven't done anything with Angel. Um, we're, we'd be happy to work with other institutions that are interested in integration of, of their own course management systems into um, Google Apps. We actually have done one uh, for Moodle. Uh, it happens to be that uh, here in our unit of academic and research technologies, we have a, a subgroup that has supported uh, K-12 educational innovation and technology. And they uh, have been using Moodle for a couple of years, and now uh, there's a Moodle integration with with um, Google Apps. That's been done just for this one case. It's not something that's been distributed, so it's um, it's not quite a, uh, it's not documented nearly to the level of our Blackboard integration. But um, those who are interested are very welcome to join the Google community and um, begin to communicate with, with colleagues, with us and others, on uh, what's involved in making these um, integrations. Yeah, and I'd like to add um, two things. Number one is I'm hoping that we can do a, a webinar similar to this one uh, with uh, that, that focuses more on Moodle. Uh, there are schools out there who have, who have built yeah. uh, different levels of connection. Um, so I would very much love to hear uh, from from all the folks who I emailed. If you have ideas for uh, topics of, for upcoming webinars, this is something I think we'd like to continue doing in 2011 and perhaps at a uh, somewhat regular schedule, be it monthly or, or biweekly or so on. Um, I would love to hear back from all of you about, um, well, firstly, what you think worked and, or didn't work with these extra these first extra credit sessions and then um, also kind of any topics you'd like us to, to cover in the future. Um, and with that, I think I'll do uh, one final question because we're kind of coming up on time. Uh, do you have any – can you share any metrics in terms of, of, of usage of um, the Boogle? Uh, I think you mentioned there, there have been 2,100 classes using, um, using Blackboard. Using Blackboard. Uh, we don't currently we – haven't, we haven't developed the metrics yet for the Boogle use. Um, it's still rather small. I would uh, – my best guess based on the support questions and the issues that we've received in our group, probably 100 to 150 um, Blackboard course sites at most. Okay. At this point, yeah. Great. Although, it's, again, it's available in any, any and every course. Okay, great. Well, let me say thank you uh, once again to, to Brian and to, and to James for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, and I will be sending a follow-up uh, email to folks here as soon as I have a recorded uh, video of this webinar that's available online, and we'll include uh, contact information from the folks you heard from today at Google, uh, as well as from Northwestern as well. So thanks once again. Uh, we have a session tomorrow uh, that focuses on how SunGuard, uh, or rather Truman State, connected uh, their system with some of their SunGuard services. And then lastly, on Thursday, we'll be hearing from Aperio, uh, which is an enterprise deployment partner that's going to be talking about some lessons they feel that um, EDU could learn from the enterprise. So thanks once again for everyone to joining, for joining, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jason. Bye-bye.